Oh boy. Hey, there we are. What's up, everybody? Welcome to WP Roundtable uh, episode. I'm just going to call it one, man. I know we've already had a bunch of episodes, and Devin, you and I have both been on this, but you know, as somebody who is not only a fan of WP Roundtable, but is now hosting WP Roundtable, you know, it's it. How do you feel? I feel great. Let's see what you can do with this thing. Let's uh, let's start the round table anew here. Nice, man. I love it. Um, so a couple things is uh, anybody who's watching can head over to wproundtable.show. And wproundtable.show is going to give you some information. There's a contact form and, you know, you can reach out. There's a new host game going on right now as we speak. And Devin, this is really good, man. Created a form, a gravity form, and on the new host, and it says like the new host spoke at this word camp and this word camp, and then you have to guess the years that I spoke at. So like, I spoke at Orange Tree and Diego. I spoke at both of those three years in a row. So that's one of the questions. Is one of those things, and I was really trying to get more involvement more interactive i thought it was funny either way but you know word camp is one of the first places that i think i met you i think it was word camp vegas if i yeah. remember 2016 um, um 15 15 2015 yeah 15 and that was also the same year that we did the um the open discussion that was the first time that we actually had the open discussion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was a cool video that? Yeah, yeah, you were a good host on that one. That was good uh, running around with the mic and that, you know, really neat conference area. That was cool. Yeah, man. And, you know, with, with that and being able to be on stage and being on a few podcasts now, I feel very comfortable being on the mic. But definitely on that day, you know, I just wanted to open up a, a general conversation about uh, Jetpack and, you know, how it's perceived because I still use Jetpack. Do you still use Jetpack? Um, sometimes very seldomly, um, but you know, we're always taking a look at it. So I've been watching what it's been doing. The recent like search integration was interesting. So I took a look at that and some of the pricing changes to that. So yeah, I'm going to keep my eye on it, keep my pulse on it. Nice, man. Um, you know, one of the first things, Devin, when I first got into WordPress, I don't know about you, I want to learn a little bit more about you about first getting into WordPress. But for me, I went straight to WordPress.com and I, I set up a blog and I was, you know, typing away as you do. And I started watching videos on YouTube. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, as I started watching videos on YouTube, I, I found out I could do less and do less because I couldn't install plugins. So that led me to the famous five minute install. Um, how did you get started with WordPress? All right, I'll give you the short version because it's kind of a long, longer version. Sure. But um, so I started with .NET using uh, SharePoint, which was uh, at the time SharePoint 2003. And then I updated to 2007. Um, and that was uh, interesting. Then moved into uh, open source technology, started looking at uh, Mambo, <laughs> if you no. remember what that was. Um, but no. eventually, it sounds cool. It was all right. It was like uh, the predecessor, well, not maybe predecessor, but very similar to Joomla. I think like they merged at some point, I think, or something, but Joomla is still around. But anyways, I went from Mambo to Joomla to Drupal, then to WordPress. So, wow. Um, I eventually led my way there and uh yeah it was quite a journey but then uh you know where i stopped right that's where i got to and uh, i'm really happy are you truly happy in wordpress because you know i think about this all the time and i actually said that the other day you know uh i was an affiliate marketer and mm. I was, you know, trying to pimp out a brand and I was trying to get links and traffic and I was doing all these things. And, you know, I, once I discovered WordPress and that I could build my own site, I was no longer interested in affiliate marketing because I wanted to build websites all the time. And I wanted to, you know, so I transitioned from affiliate marketer to developer. And, you know, that's how I ended uh, 
the conversation was is I don't know if it was the right move, but I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, you know, I constantly have my my ups and downs with WordPress, but overall throughout the years, it's been entirely, uh, well, not entirely, but mostly up. And, um, and so, you know, when I first came from these other systems, CMS is into WordPress, it was pre custom post types. It was, yeah. Uh, and that, that really was one of the pre short things. codes. No, short codes were still there. I mean, like, plug really? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember short codes being around like 2000, 2013. Did you start before then? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, well, I can't say okay. definitively, but I'm pretty positive. When you started? Code. Yeah. All right. I remember when themes were kind of the same, like they all looked the same. They all did the same thing. It's just like the background. One was looked like a notepad and another one looked like a candle. The other one looked like a canvas. And, you know, like there wasn't really <laughs> much separating them other than that background style. And to see where we are now, um, you know, with theme communities and managed hosting and, uh, you know, support. Support was never a thing. I feel like, you know, how much hair I probably would have from not pulling it out from the hours that I just wanted to connect this thing to that to make it work, you know? Yeah. There. Do you remember starting with the famous five minute install? Do you remember like any, any part to, for me, I was an hour and 45 minutes. It took me to install my very first WordPress site. I didn't really? have any, I didn't have a local. I didn't have anything like that. I found a free host. It was like free hosting domain dot com dot CC or something like that. And they would give you a small like 205 megabyte, you know, database install everything. And you could, you could effectively get WordPress up and you could upload maybe an image. Maybe you could write a post, but you know, the, you couldn't really do more than that. There was no bandwidth, but because mm. of that, I was able to learn how WordPress works, but that took me an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't five minutes. No, no, it takes you more than five minutes to read the how to install WordPress on uh, their, their WordPress.org site. But uh, my first experience with installing WordPress was through the cPanel with uh, Fantastico, I believe it's called. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, you can just sort of look at whatever CMSs you want to install on your server. And so that's how I was going through Joomla, you know, going through some of these other ones. And then you just kind of one click install it and they create the database for you. Uh, they even create the users. And then, um, but the problem with that is like, it was, there were some security issues with that. I mean, I think it's still pretty secure, but, you know, they dropped some files in there. So, like, I wanted to do the pure install you know, with just my prefix yeah, database, do. which I chose. And um, by that time, I think I got relatively good experience under my belt. And it didn't take me an hour and 45 minutes, but it did take me, uh, let's good say, like time. 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I caught up with Matt Molenweg one day after he came to WordCamp, um, or he came to a meetup here in Vegas. And he said, two never famous never famous. And, you know, he said, number two, like you just said, if you read the documentation, you wait for a download for, you know, FileZilla, you wait for your SFTP credentials to get created inside of wherever your domain is, wherever your hosting is, you know, that takes time. And especially if you're trying to say, come learn WordPress, it's this great thing. And it's going to be five minutes, you know, like, that's, that's not the um, expectation that you would try to set that it's easy. And then, you know, go watch all these videos. Right, right. Especially if, uh, you know, you don't have, you don't even know what FTP is. You're newly introduced to hosting. You just want your own website. Uh, it's definitely not going to be that, like, experience that they promise with the, the five minutes. Sure, sure, man. Um, I remember setting up my first site. It was for Crash Cart Media. I had this really good idea that I was going to help brands rebuild their website and you know, back in 2009 2010 a lot of companies needed that help 
So for mm. me, it was a crash cart, you know, where you go like you take the paddles and you go clear and, you know, like you shock them like that thing. That whole thing <laughs> was the crash cart. And I felt like my job was to help companies rebrand and get that jump start. So I'm hitting them with the crash cart. So I had that and I found this corporate theme. I don't even Ooh. remember what the name of the corporate theme was, but I know it stood out because corporate themes to me were so new. It was like I had a blog theme or I could have this other thing, but corporate was not a word that, you know, we associated with WordPress like we do now. I don't, I don't people, I don't think they still call them corporate themes. I think now they're like lawnmower construction guy mm -hmm. and cone flipper theme. You know, yeah. like, I don't think they're actually called corporate themes anymore. Yeah, it's gotten so niche. You can't really just call it corporate theme. I mean, I guess you could. I'm sure there are themes out there that are still called that or categorized as that. I have this blog post that a while ago and it's called like, why do we need super specific themes? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and for me, I did a little soul searching, if you will. And I realized that me, I used to work for a mortgage company. And so I spent all day learning how to do this and calculate numbers and how should the intake process handle for when people want to get a loan and stuff. Like that. Mm -hmm. And then when I left my job, I realized this is why a mortgage theme would come out. Me being a WordPress developer, I'm out of a job. I not release theme called mortgage theme and try to get more mortgage clients. So, you know, like yeah. the super specific themes, I think, come from more and more people who had a job and now they're going independent, freelance, it's whatever it is. So they're creating those kind of things. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, with the more experience people get on the job, the more uh, use cases and, so, and problems they're looking to solve. And if they've figured out a good niche, maybe a bad one, but they're going to go after it. You know, I remember with WordPress uh, doing before WooCommerce was kind of like the de facto e-commerce. I was using a theme uh, that had built in e-commerce functionality. What? I think it was called like furniture store or was called something like that. Furniture store. Yeah. But that, and then they had another one that was, oh gosh, I forget the name, but um, the, all the e-commerce functionality was built into the theme and uh Man, we had to hack that thing together to make it kind of work and um, still didn't really have the you legs. You had functionality in a theme. I personally didn't, but uh, wow, the, dude. the theme author did, yeah. <laughs> was that something? So I remember back in early days when it was a collaborative group, like, hey, we have this website. We're all going to decide. Was that what you're describing? Like it wasn't the theme you would have picked or it wasn't the theme like maybe you wanted the functionality in the theme. Was that like a, a, a group consensus? Yeah, I mean, it was like when I was working at an agency in 2010, I believe it was. And so, Ooh. yeah, they we didn't have custom post types yet, I believe. And um, and we were just trying to be scrappy. And it's like, what can we get that's turnkey? what i like it so you said pre custom post types do you remember when custom post types were introduced yeah it was um 3.0 right wordpress 3.0 ooh i th i think it was 3.0 um some days i think it's 3.2 some days i think it's 3.5 but i remember it's in the threes for sure yeah <laughs> I don't know why i feel like 3.8 isn't isn't wrong either I thought it was 2.8 or 3.0. I forget which one. Ooh. Oh, maybe I'm too far ahead in the timeline. All right. Custom host types. Man. <laughs> um, setting up a first site, you was that the first site that you set up was tickets or was like the first site you set up a, a blog or, you know, like a cat blog kind of thing? You know, what was the very first site that you built? Do you remember it? Oh man, I need to remember. This is a long time ago here. Um, I would say yeah. the first site I was probably my pers my first personal site that I set up as a blog, Ooh. and uh, I got a lot of traffic eventually to that site because through my learning experience, I was just writing posts about WordPress, and it was just a lot of them were were 
ranking pretty high on the on the search engines and i got i forget how many yeah man. how much traffic but it was up to like you know 20 30 thousand when i got done with it so as you were building your site you were like oh i didn't close this tag or i didn't do this right and then you would just blog about your failures or something yeah some of those articles still get a lot of traffic Wow. So I kind of did the same thing. I was building MySpace layouts and <laughs> I, I was I was using MySpace to their blog feature to be like, hey, check out this new band that I made a layout for. It's all on tables. Go check, check it out. And my buddy said, hey, you're doing a really good thing. You should check out WordPress. And, you know, being an affiliate marketer, I thought I need a landing page anyways. I need some kind of website why not go into it? And it had a website and I could blog. I thought this is two in one. This is great. When, when is this going to come around again? And you know, here we are. I'm, I'm glad we stuck to it. Um, yeah, for sure. Wow. You, your own personal blog. The first mm. site I remember building was for an entertainment company here in Las yeah. Vegas. They were a family that sing and play music and you know they rap they do a bunch of things so they had an entertainment company around it and they had other people that they knew who could sing and do stuff like that so the first site i built uh was for tickets and we used jigo shop and uh, you jigo know, shop jigo shop I, you know emphasis on the o emphasis on the o like i always imagine like the donut sign in la you know how like the big o it's like jigo <laughs> yeah. shop yeah um <laughs> But so I set up this site and I was able to make, you know, tickets a thing. You could buy a ticket. You could go to PayPal. You could do this. Not one person used the site. They never sold the <laughs> ticket online. But if it worked or, or but if they would have, it would have gone through because I made probably 20 test transactions. I charged my own credit card like, you know, 20 different times, but it went through <laughs> and it worked. Yeah, there's no test mode back then. No sandboxes. <laughs> no sandbox. No fake Visa credit card. You couldn't just do four 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 three three three. Yeah, none of that existed, man. <laughs> That's when you made things like twenty five cents or you know whatever the industry minimum was to process the payment, like a dollar one. It was a dollar one right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, man. Um, I think about the install process now and. I go through these series of processes that I like to call going back. So when I first took over the WordPress meetup group in Vegas, it was 2015. I wanted to not only provide content for people like you and I have been in WordPress for a while, but mm -hmm. I wanted to back and remember what it was being a rookie or being new or you know going through those and i'm kind of in that process right now with everything that's going on i've had a lot of time on my hands to reflect and think about this journey that i've been on since 2011 i i never spoke at a meetup i've never gotten on my computer and said here i'm going to show you how this works or how this goes together i didn't have an opinion about what host was better and you know and to see that timeline, um, it's got me remembering, uh, you know, old ways that we did things. And one of the things that I clearly remember is that famous five minute install. Um, mm -hmm. That video still haunts me to this day. Um, WPMU Dev is when I thought for a while you were part of WPMU Dev because your name's Devin and it was Dev everywhere, like everywhere on Twitter, everywhere on Facebook. When I first met you, it was Dev um, <laughs> shorthanded. But, you know, WPMU Dev is where, you know, I hung out when I first started learning. It was WP Candy. WP Tavern was still pretty brand new. And then yep. uh, WPMU Dev is where, I, you know, I spent my I was outside the b-ball shoot school, you know, whatever that rap is. That's uh, where I was. I hung out there all day long. Um, where did you hang out? Where did you get your WordPress information from? Yeah. So I was definitely a fan of WP candy for sure. And yeah. then, uh, Chris Coyer had a site for a while. I'm trying to remember what it's called. Um, I got, so you were have a lot better memory than I do. I just like glance over, but uh, he had a site for a while and he had uh, <clears throat> a lot of great articles on there as well. 
Um, definitely Stack Overflow was a good place to find answers. And then um, eventually got into meetups and WordCamps and um, going to those and learning. I remember having several different light bulb moments where listening to presentations and seeing how you know these developers were doing a lot of really cool stuff, whether it's in yeah. the WP admin or it's on the, the theme side and just learning a bunch through there. Um, but WP Tavern for sure. Um, yeah, so very similar to you. I didn't hang out at WPMU Dev though. I was not. Uh, I've been there. I've never hung out though. I hang out there because they had fancy, cool things like copy and paste this code, and now you can have a login screen, or you can have a login link in the menu. Or uh, I think one of my personal favorites, still to this day, if you search for it, how to redirect somebody when they log in to WordPress. Yeah, like you don't still want them relevant. to go. You don't want them to go to the admin. You want them to go to the, you know this other page, and that was you know the first article that always showed up. And I think in some many ways that SEO is still pumping over there, man. Oh, That's for sure. Funny. Yeah, they're doing well. So you know they're doing fine for themselves. And uh, yeah, I mean that's you, still relevant. And that's beauty of WordPress, right? You want to redirect this user based on what the role is, or you know the permission level, or yeah. if they bought purchase a product or whatever. Yeah. That's WordPress. You know, have at it. Yeah, for sure. Or, you know, the functionality that we didn't even know could exist will be here shortly. I mean, look at blocks. Nobody thought blocks was coming. You know, I thought for sure page builders were here to stay. Everyone's going to want to have this thing to do this. And, you know, here we are with blocks. So anything is possible with WordPress, even logging in and redirecting to people, you know, on your cat blog. Just having a simple, I remember like clicking the little box and just say, yes, people can register to this. Like that was big to me. You know, I was mm -hmm. like, oh no, now I'm inviting pe people into my little WordPress space and I don't have security and nothing was set up. Everything <laughs> could just, you know, comment and it would post live. It's not like I had the curation turned on to where, you know, in WordPress now you can say, hold a comment until it's moderated or whatever. I had everything set to just yes. So if you did anything on my site, it was live, it was there, and there was no cache. So it was, <laughs> you know, like it was just there. Um, first experiences have taught me a lot. So, you know, I do tend to try to remember things. I do try to, I look at pictures, I look at old things, and I found old videos from me speaking at the vegas wordpress meetup group in 2012 um mm -hmm. i was very opinionated back then and you know i was not very nice to wp e-commerce do you remember that mm. plugin? yes i do i do i remember a bunch of them jigo shop and uh, shop with two p's oh shop also, with two p's yeah shop pup -pup was a good one shop -pup -pup. <laughs> right and now look now look at paypal now they have two p's if that would have saved that that probably could have been a thing man they could have probably branded off that you shop papa and join with <laughs> paypal papa <laughs> <laughs> they yeah, could they, have i don't know yeah yeah they missed man. opportunity right there um missed opportunity that's a good word um Devin, you do things with donations and you do things with give. And, you know, I've seen a lot of your work just, you had word, you know, I used to go to WordPress or wordimpress.org all the time because you mm -hmm. had this cool little, um, your, your newsletter box, it was black or it was like gray and it had like the WordPress logo on it. Very clean white text with an orange link. And it was, you know, I used to go to your guys' site all the time to learn design. I'm not a designer. Mm -hmm. I'm a coder. I'm not a designer, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, I used to go and do stuff like that, but you know, I'm looking at your plugin give and I use give all the time. You know, not mm -hmm. only that I'm an affiliate member, you, you know, I, I recommend give, you know, I would never tell anybody not to take a donation and in, in any needs. And there's plenty of tools for donations. But what I wanted to really touch on is when I, tell somebody about WordPress, they usually come to me and they say, Hey, I'm starting this. And you know, what should I use? And my answer, you know, probably similar to you is WordPress. Mm. But I was just thinking that wouldn't it be cool 
if you log into WordPress and it says, hey, what kind of site are you setting up? And you say, hey, I'm setting like a charity donation. And you do a couple settings. There's a small little uh, editor, maybe a little wizard, if you will. And then based on those, maybe it would recommend plugins like, hey, you have this. This is a, a donation plugin for your charity. You're also going to want to have this. You're also going to want to have this. Or, you know, somebody on Twitter the other day shared that the featured plugins are still the same featured plugins from like 2000. 11 2012 but i was just thinking wouldn't it be cool for somebody if they're still going through the famous five minute install or they're doing that one click install whatever it is if it said hey what is the purpose of your site here and maybe not modulate it but help guide people in a better direction because even mm. then somebody has a charity somebody has a donation they don't know about give it's your job right. to brand and market but it'd be cool to say we as the WordPress community think this would be a really good plugin for you, you know? Cause... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, it's an interesting thought. I think one, I have a couple thoughts on that. One sure. is I'm not so sure it's WordPress's role to do that. And it could have, you know, a lot of repercussions as far as like what plugins are selected depending on what category website you're choosing. Okay. I think that's more of a, a host's responsibility for a lot of that because, I mean, basically what you're talking about is like easy mode, which GoDaddy pretty much, they came out with, they rewrote it, and now they have a new version of it. Uh, yeah. Bluehost has their own version. So, you know, there's they're not the same UIs, they're not the same experience, but the host has developed that already. And like, you know, we've been trying to get into those platforms already, you know, and trying to beat out some of our competitors so that if they do select a fundraising site or what have you, we're, we're number one, right? Um, if it were WordPress doing that, it, I feel like they're, they should be more impartial and they sure. should just remain kind of um, as the solution provider, not the, the recommender. Okay. And, and uh, you know, I think the way that it is now where they put you in WordPress after you get the install done and then, you're kind of left when uh, with a blue ocean. What do you want to do with it? Um, mm. Then you can, right? Versus sure. a host where I don't know what I'm doing. I want to get onto a managed host. I want uh, the easy mode to walk me through it. So, sure. you know, that's kind of my feeling on it. Interesting. I understand what you're saying about, you know, you WordPress is just what this is built on. And what are you building on top of WordPress? And that's this charity donation um, some, you know, even a church, something where it, it's, it's, you know, information that's going out to a community. I mean, it could even be something as trying to help people get away from, you know, maybe where they live or a better life. That's still, you're getting information out and you need some kind of newsletter. You need some kind of magazine to get that information out there. And, you know, I would never say don't use WordPress, hmm. but I guess what I'm saying is, you know, when you install a theme, that theme says, Hey, install this, install this, install this, install this. And, you know, I thought if you took it one step up and for anybody who didn't know WordPress, you know, maybe you and me would check the box. Yeah. Hey, I've been using WordPress since I was knee high to a duck. Don't need the width. Don't need the editor. But if you're new, you know, Hey, what is your end goal? We're going to show you some themes and maybe they're, maybe they're voted. Maybe we get people over to wordpress.org. You create an account and you go favorite it. Maybe if it's favorited enough or, you know, like really let the people who are in the space. And, you know, I understand that, you know, you can go create accounts and you can make numbers go up and down. I understand it's a math thing, but in the purity of it is we all recommend this. You can take my username on on WordPress.org and look at my favorite plugins right now. You mm -hmm. know, why couldn't you do the same thing with with that in that sense of have a user called at charity and here's what at charity recommends all of their, you know, recommended plugins or things that they've done, you know? So taking it one step up and saying, Hey, you're new to WordPress. Let me walk you through not only how this works, but here's, you know, maybe a way to get started instead of, you know, not recommending your plugin versus anybody else or anybody else over yours. You know, I don't, I don't want to get into that game, but it's where do you even start? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and I feel like if I have to leave WordPress to go learn WordPress 
it's almost counterintuitive in a way of, you know, go here to learn this, come back, go here to learn this, come back. Like, you know, why isn't there something in the dashboard? So even getting started, we have links and docs that go to the codex. But even then, if you don't know what you're reading, like you said, you don't know what SFTP is, you don't know any of that, that that looks like Greek documentation. So some kind of editor, some kind of um, wizard in the front and just, you know, hey, let me point you in the right direction. And I feel like what was Ben's plugin called? Uh, I know you're going to mention that. Um, it, was, it had a ninja on it, and it was called. Gosh, what is it called? Um, it, was a, it was a GoDaddy thing too, man. Um, yeah, I remember when they rolled that out. It wasn't the smoothest thing ever. Dot pro sidekick sidekick dot pro. That's yeah. what it was. Man, you got I, a good memory, dude. <laughs> I had to think about that for a minute. Yeah, Sidekick.pro. You, you know, Ben uh, was the first person that I reached out to in 2015 when I was trying to put a WordCamp together. He said, you know, go ahead and reach out to me. And I asked him to be my keynote speaker. And, you know, I think that's how I remember it was. He said something one time, and I think somebody made a joke like dot .pro. And he goes, you know, no, Sidekick.pro. Interesting, yeah. man. Sidekick.pro. That was, you know, a plugin that was great. It showed you here's how you do this. Here's how, you know, the posts go through. Oh, you want to be taught and called post types, check this out. Or you want to update, you know, information on your Im images. It was a cool little walkthrough, you know, and, and I'm kind of dying for that. We have it with Gutenberg. There's, you know, mm. that little editor, that little thing. I think it could be better. And I feel like that's where I'm getting at is, Hey, instead of just installing WordPress, and now there's this whole world called blocks to just build the front end of your site. You're also going to need this, 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 that, you know what I mean? It, it, it's in some ways it feels overwhelming. How do you handle yeah. stuff like that? Yeah. So a couple of thoughts on all that there is, <clears throat> you know, we have a very large ecosystem within our, yeah. our give plugin, right? We have 35 plus add-ons, all sorts of, you know, third party add-ons created for it. And then our, our core plugin, right? Very yeah. similar to how WooCommerce is modeled, right? So, you know, documentation, it's never static. It's always dynamic and changing alongside the application as it evolves over time. And even in the company at our size, we're about 20 people right now. It's really hard to keep that documentation updated in line with what we're creating as far as new features, new functionalities, and new interfaces and experiences. Yeah. So imagine on a volunteer based system where it's not a paid, you know, platform where it's, you know, the folks that are building these iterations and, and getting into give like, or sorry, into WordPress. Um, I feel like if they have to update documentation alongside of it, it's going to be really hard to keep that in line with each other. And they're doing it with Gutenberg kind of, um, but, you know, remember the tooltip API when WordPress came out with the, the tooltips? Yeah. Those weren't even that super developer friendly to work with. They were kind of a struggle, to be honest. Tooltips, man. Those remember were like that? the yeah the little things like where you just hover over the text and go like, hey, this word means that. Yeah, that no, you can about? kind of create like a, a tour of uh, WordPress. Oh, oh, oh I understand what you're saying now. In yeah, boot, maybe tooltips isn't the right word for it. It's something else like info card. Or, I forget. Or maybe you know it's it's multiple marketing because I've heard tooltips. Um, Bootstrap uses tooltips, and they're like they're the little things that when you hover over it, it's like a little chat box that pops over top of it and says you know it says like interwebs, and then you go over it and it says like hi, I'm Devin Walker. Right, Something right. Like that. Yeah, but it, it was uh, it was never easy trying to explain to people all right go to post and go to here and you know a sidekick pro or even like you were saying having those tool tips was so nice but it was hard to work with um especially right. earlier i i imagine it'd be easier now with wordpress because we've built more on top of it 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 function the functionality alone allows us to do more there's an api there's you know uh i was on water cooler today learning about graphql there's so mm. many tools out there that you know like tooltips probably could become a thing again so how about this here's what i'm saying let's let's wait give gutenberg a couple years for it to completely take over the admin experience we have this a is the slow burn 
Yeah, we have a okay. single page application now as WordPress and admin. It's very page builder experience, right? And right. now we can create a product tour that once you get into WordPress, new fresh install, you go on the product tour, just like you're signing Ooh. up for a new SaaS or something like that. It's not the role of WordPress to train you on WordPress, but they should at least give you a tour of WordPress. And then you can go to like WP 101 and Sean does a great job over there and you can learn Ooh, all about it. Good plug. Right? Yeah, man. You, you know, that or go through like WP beginner or yeah, like you said, hey, this is the lay of the land. This is where you're going to upload your images this is where your posts probably should go. Here's yep. how you create categories and, you know, have a good day. But here's a couple of resources as well. You know, that's yeah, not if bad... you don't want the tour, don't take the tour. <laughs> you know, don't take the tour. Now, does the tour happen happen every 30 minutes? Is it on a cron? Is it, you know, like going to the Hoover Dam and there's like, like a tour guide or is it just whenever you log in? It's I'd say it's that first <laughs> login and then uh, you can retake the tour if you manually choose so. But you shouldn't be bothered by the tour again unless you want to. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny, man. A tour. A tour is not bad. WP tour underscore WP tour or something like that. That wouldn't be a bad. That would probably have to get built as a plugin first before it goes in the core. Don't you think? I'd build it as a SaaS, you know, like intercom. Ooh. Have you seen what intercom's doing with product tours? It's pretty no. awesome, man. It's a what SaaS. is intercom? Intercom is like a SaaS based solution. So you can have the little chat bubble you see on a lot of sites. You can have uh, your own documentation, your own support, but they also have a product tours feature which you can customize where the tooltip shows up. You can have little videos. You can have uh, GIFs, GIFs right in there, and it makes it fun, and it's easy. It's point and click. You don't even need to know any code. Oh, wow. What's that called again? Intercom. Intercom. I just wanted to plug it one more time. Dude, this is cool. I'm looking at this on, on my browser right now. Dude, this is great. Thank you for the, oh, thank you for this tip. They're a massive company in San Francisco. Like They went from... Uh, I don't know how many employees, but now they're just blowing up. Wow, man. Wow. Um, you know, before we close out of this, my question to you is what would you, what would you recommend to anybody right now learning WordPress? Because for you and I, when we first got started, like we mentioned earlier, we didn't have to know custom post types. It was it was a, a a smaller barrier to entry, if you will. You had to learn how this works, how the install works, how to you know debug and rename the plugins folder, things like that. But now that I feel like is the tip of the iceberg compared to now you got to learn JavaScript deeply and you got to get into this and what theme are you involved with? Are you going to go join a community? Are you going to go hybrid? Are you going to build your own? What would you recommend somebody getting into WordPress now? You know, not only maybe a tip, where would you point them? Sure, sure. So it depends on who that person is. It sounds like you're talking from a developer's perspective. They want to get into it, but you know, I think and there's different. How about how about both beginner and, and developer? I'm Susie, and I have a dog, and I and my dog walks or does something really cool. So I want to have a blog about how I walk my dog every week. And then somebody mm. who somebody who really wants to you know like build something. Definitely. So WP Beginner is a good site. Um, to get started, I but it's not really a. It's kind of throw you all in and find out what you what you want. They do have some really good content though. Sure. Um, WP one hundred one, like I mentioned, that's pretty great. Um, but I would definitely start from the beginner side by you know going to WordCamps, building your network, you know building those people who you can rely on, and um, you know ping questions to because. Um, it's always useful to uh, not learn in a box. You know, if you're just searching the internet, it's great. But having somebody who's been there and can help you lead you down the path is good too. So, unfortunately, word camps are kind of like canceled all this year. So, yeah, you know, you won't be able even to do that. But, yeah, even meetups. But you know, Facebook groups, Facebook groups are great. And then uh, from the development standpoint. Um, you know, you definitely have to know more JavaScript than ever before now. That's the way it's going. You know, you have to know NPM uh, packages. Like, you need to know React. Composer is a big one. Mm, yep. So you have to be sort of more on that side of it. You know, uh, one thing that's really kind of lacking in WordPress is more like 
back end experience, I feel though. Uh, How so? Just because there's not a lot of really advanced database architects within our space, as, as far as I've found, okay. and uh, a lot of people tend to to um, drift towards the front end because it's more appealing visually. Um, whereas there's a lot of to be said about solid back end skills, right? You and you're seeing it with WP GraphQL. You just yeah. talked about it. You know, um, that's doing some really good stuff. Um, What's that gentleman's name who is one of the creators of that? Um, he's got a J- shade. Jason Ball. Super smart guy. That guy yeah, dude. Great. I learned a lot from him today. He showed us how to get started with it. That, like, I moved my mic and I was just like, you know, I was sitting there like, go ahead, teach me. What can, what can mm-hmm. I learn? Um, yeah, because it, you have it, REST APIs, you have GraphQL uh, or WP GraphQL. You know, they're both great, but they both serve different purposes. We use GraphQL as well, and uh, we in, use REST APIs. Inside of Give? Inside of our future product, which will be um, using GraphQL, yes. Wow. Wow, man. Is that something that you're learning, GraphQL, or is that something you already know, or is that something that your whole team is learning? Like, you know, we, like you said, you're coming out with this product. How did you get into GraphQL? So I'm going to be honest, like as a business has grown, my coding skills have declined, declined, <laughs> and I've had to take more, Mine of, too. A, more of a leadership role. Um, yeah. So personally, I'm not the whiz on GraphQL yeah. at our company, um, so I can't speak too much into it. But, cool. um, you know, I can throw enough keywords out there so it makes it sound like I, I do. Right. <laughs> You're like, like I know it opens with brackets and it closes with brackets, so I'm gonna at least start there. That's funny, yeah. man. Yeah, you got that. That's interesting. So, you know, meetups, word camps, when when those kick in full swing, you can join on uh, a meetup right now. There's plenty of meetups on Twitter that are allowing people. No, you can't get bombed anymore, so you have to be part of the group. Maybe you have to go join the newsletter to get the special link. But I talked to the New Jersey meetup group and, you know, that or I'm sorry, Philadelphia um, with mm. Liam Dempsey. And, mm. you know, I did 15 minutes about three plugins. I think every site should have installed right out of the box. And, um, you know, I've never been on. I've never a been to Philadelphia. I've never met a lot of the people that were there and I made more friends and I learned a lot about marketing that day. So I would definitely say jump in work camps and meetups. Um, you know what I call meetups? What? Free word camp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause like when you, when you go to a meetup, you know, you're going to have somebody like myself or you or John Hawkins or even Matt or somebody, they're going to get up and it's not like they're showing you something not relevant to WordPress. It's just not a 45 minute focus centered on this one idea. It's, you know, Hey, I'm going to show you this plugin, or I'm going to show you how to connect analytics to this, or here's why you're not doing analytics. Right. You know, I call those free word camps, even though word camps, word camps only mean 20 bucks. Yeah. Ooh, the yeah. networking. Did you do yeah. a lot of networking when you first got started? Oh yeah, I mean, I was uh, I couldn't have gotten to where I am today without meetups and networking. So, um, do you have like business cards and all that good stuff? <laughs> uh, I probably had some cheesy ones, yeah. Dude, I've never had a business card that I've handed out at a meetup. I've never wanted to. Um, advertise or or try to feel like I'm only there gain clients and I'm not at the meetup to to give in or something. And I still do that to this day. If somebody comes up and you know they want to talk to me about something, maybe I'll give them my number or I'll tell them to reach out to me on the Facebook group. But while I'm at a meetup, I don't want to hand out anything. I don't I want to be there in the moment and I, I want to you know I want to make a real connection with people. And I feel like you said being there, meeting those people, that that is what got that longevity in WordPress for us going. You know, I lean on people all the time to, hey, how do we do this? Or, you know, do you have a, a good way to teach me this quickly? And I mm. ask people that all the time. Yeah, that's what the first thing should be, you know, helping people and learning and doing that. And business is all secondary. You know, we're not there for that. 
when you first install WordPress, I was just thinking about this, like the, the big box comes across the top and it's, you know, it has a link and it says get started and stuff like that. You know, it would, like you were saying, a little tool tip or something like, you know, Hey, you you want to get started. Even just knowing that people can go and look at plugins, not through their WordPress site. They can go to wordpress.org and go search through plugins. I mean, even stuff like that, you know, more public facing, more front end to say, hey, you're getting into WordPress. Here's what you should know. You know, anything like that, I think is better. Man, meetups. Yeah. Meetups. Yeah, absolutely. Totally agree. Devin, what is the future right now of of you and WordPress? What does it look like? Are you um, an individual that you know, WordPress is obviously here. We power 36% of the internet. It's not like it's going away tomorrow. Knock on some wood. But, you know, um, with Gatsby coming out and with JavaScript being this new thing and with blocks, you know, are you guys seeing a change right now in your company to, you know, migrate or to, you know, get ahead of this thing? Because it's going to come here. It's going to be a thing. The block directory is going to happen. Are, you know, uh, Every, I think everybody's transitioning, but you know, what does the future look like for you personally? And, and, you know, if you could share anything to give cool, if not, no worries. Yeah. Um, you know, we're staying on track with, with what WordPress is doing. So WordPress is slowly building itself from the inside out using, um, the new technologies, which I think is smart. Uh, yeah. there's a ton of legacy code in their code base. There's a ton of legacy code in our code base. But for instance, we just rebuilt our entire reports interface using uh, React and wow. um, and the REST API. And we're going to be doing that for other various screens. On the front end of our, uh, of our plugin, we're coming out with a new um, form, uh, donation form um, that allows, uh, that's built in a much more modern way. And we're kind of using embed style um, techniques to make sure that no themes and plugins are messing with it oh and wow. yeah it's gonna be really cool so you're we're, tying we're, functionality to the plugin itself exactly and, and, so we're creating like an isolated environment within your own wordpress sites that other themes and plugins cannot interfere with because wow. that's been a notorious issue and then we'll yeah dude expose that on the front end of your website um wow. so yeah, there's there's a couple different plugins doing that right now um, to get around that. And uh, but yeah, we're definitely staying on par with WordPress. We're going to be here for a long time. We're in twenty the twenties now, and it's about yeah, time right. we start making this change. So you know, using PHP seven point zero plus, using um, auto loading, optimizing our code. It's definitely all stuff we're doing. Caching plugins, you know, minimizing anything that you can do to to get that quick load, man. It's very interesting that you talk about, you know, having an environment where your give forms are your give forms and, you know, these other things don't interact with it. it it's interesting to think about that. Um, I can't wait to see that, man. How fun. Yeah, soon. Very soon. Do you get to test drive products like that? Like, hey, here's this thing, and you download you download a zip, and you have like a, a a local on your thing that you get to play with, or you know, are you the guy that sits in your suit and sits in the back, and now you have to be impressed in the board meetings? You know, how does that no. go? <laughs> I'm super hands on with everything. <laughs> yeah, nice man, cool yeah. man. Devin, thank you for your time today. Thank you for for joining me here. Um, we should be together right now in San Diego having a drink, yeah. something. Um, right now, right now we should. <laughs> oh, dude, right? Yeah, we sh there should be a speaker sponsor dinner happening right about now, dude. That's how this is very interesting. I don't even have a drink right now. I have a bottle that kind of counts. I have this now. Do you use Nalgene bottles? Are you a big fan of bottles? No, I got my trusty steel bottle or, or can uh, cup Your right canteen? here. Your canteen? Yeah. It's regularly filled. It's regularly filled with, you know, Jameson in this. <laughs> I'm more of a funny. Jack guy myself, but sure. You, more of a Jack whiskey than a Jameson, huh? Yeah. Is it a flavor or is it is it, you know, uh, just what you've always drank since, you know, you're legally allowed to drink? Yeah, it's that fine Tennessee sipping whiskey, man. 
Kenneth D sipping whiskey. All right. All right. I'm a little Irish <laughs> in that way. I have a little green on right now. You know, my son is named after my favorite whiskey, which is Jameson. And, uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. I, t- I took a tour of that distillery and, um, you know, like you said, with my memory, I have very fond memories of that distillery. So when we were coming up with names, um, my mom goes, how about Jameson? And it just, Oh dude, that that's a good name. That is a good name. I like right. it. Yeah, man. Devin, thank you for your time. Where can people find you online and you know, how can how can people learn more about what you do in WordPress and you know your your affiliation with WordPress? Where can they go? What's all the good links? Sure. Well, uh, you can go to my Twitter, it's at interwebs, or go to my website, devin.org. And um, it hasn't been updated in a while, but it's on my list to do to keep posting Mine too. regularly. Yeah. So those are the channels. Check it out. But thank you, Russell, so much. And um, really, really great that you're reviving or, or renewing. Bringing reviving is life. a good word. Yeah. To the round table. To the round table. Uh, do you happen to remember the episode that you were on? Do you know what number it is? I don't remember now. So I have this thing where I've even watched that episode and right now. I don't remember. That's the one thing of this call. My memory is failing me is I think it's like 96, 97. I feel like you're on pretty, pretty early in the days. Um, yeah, it's been a couple of years at least. A couple. Kyle, right? yeah, yeah, man. Even then I was watching the early parts of this show and, you know, Mark Benzicky and there was, uh, I worked with Kellen Mace at web dev studios and mm. Kellen was big on this show for a while. He was on like the first 60 and wow. I, I didn't even know that. So, you know, going through the rebranding process and updating the YouTube and getting a website going, you know, I've kind of got a crash cart, if you will, a crash cart history, <laughs> lesson, um, with round table, um, very interesting. Thank you for being on the show today, man. Yeah, thank you. And everybody out there watching or you know following along, go to wproundtable.show. There's more information. You can find us on Twitter. It's WPRT Table. Hash or at WPRT A B L E. You know, it's it's not my my thing. I inherited it. Maybe I'll I'll think of you know WPRT something along the lines, but follow us on Twitter. Jump on, uh, you know, here on YouTube. Go follow Devin. Definitely follow Devin. Let's get him at least five new followers on his blog. Make him right. write new content. Perfect. <laughs>